I guess the first thing, and I think it's very important, is to respect that people have the right to decide what they believe is, is right for them. So that's an, an inalienable right that everybody has. However, we have to help people understand the common sense of the situation. One of the examples I use is, and I personally regard health as the most important aspect in my, my family's, my loved one's lives, and I think most people do. So we say our health is our wealth. It's a common phrase in, across different cultures. If we think of our health like something valuable, like let's say a, a Ferrari car, something really expensive that most people will never have. But if we think of it as something valuable, we wouldn't go online to find out how to service that or how to tinker with the mechanics of it. We bring it to a specialist, particularly a Ferrari dealer. We might even bring it to a, a local garage. We bring it to a specialist. Cancer is thousands of different, very complicated diseases. And mankind has spent decades advancing in that. And we've made some very big advances. So if we take that, well then, surely we wouldn't just listen to someone that we don't know on social media telling us how we should treat it. We would go to a specialist, to an oncologist, somebody who's got track record training, who's maybe spent decades building up their craft, because they're the ones that are most likely going to stack the odds in our favor. And that's really, I suppose, in, in the broader sense what I would say, that certainly we respect people's views, but ultimately there is a right and a wrong. On the other side, I suppose the thing that frightens us, and, and when I hear it, is we know that this can impact care in a very significant way. So we know that uh, certain kinds of diets, things like the alkaline diets, keto diets, Gerson diets, etc., can greatly shorten the life expectancy of patients. We know that, um, in general, uh, one of the biggest indicators of the likelihood of how well someone will do with a cancer diagnosis is how stable their weight is. And if they lose large amounts of weight very quickly, that in itself is an indica independent indicator that they're likely to do very poorly. So if there's a diet like a keto diet that precipitates that, it will mean the patient is less well able to tolerate various different types of treatment. And treatment can be tough, but um, treatment is based on evidence built up over decades. So if they're less likely to be able to tolerate that, if they're feeling sick, if they're not getting the nutrients that their body needs, even if the diet works against the tumour, they're not going to be able to, to, to reap the benefit from that. So really, I think people need to respect their bodies, respect their health as being really important. And if it's really important, you don't just listen to someone you know. You get as much specialist advice and guidance. There's a lot of good evidence-based sites out there, and so people, I suppose, need to be careful where they look. So you don't go wildly online. And indeed, if you go on to the likes of Amazon or Google, a lot of the top searches will be into non-evidence-based areas where there's a lot of potential for going wrong. You need to go to trusted uh, local sites, um, like evidence-based charities or government sites, uh, you know, various sites that, that have a quality mark that people might expect. Also, the loved ones need to not link people to that, not give them books about this magic diet that's going to cure their cancer. Um, at worst, it can be very upsetting. Um, it can create all kinds of conflict inside in a person. Uh, and also, it obviously runs the potential that they'll pay attention to that. So I think caregivers need to be very careful and be supportive in practical ways and patients themselves need to be careful around the advice that they get and try to get as much expertise as they can. Talk openly with their oncology team. I think most people are actually very surprised when they bring in information to their oncologist and their oncologist says, yeah, I've, I've heard about this and I'm going to sit you down and explain this to you and, and why, in our opinion, this isn't the way to go. Um, so I, I think most uh, oncologists and most healthcare professionals are actually very open to discussing and talking these things through and will support in, if somebody does want to go on a particular diet, they'll often provide support and try and best ensure that we don't see massive weight loss or there's no nutritional deficit. So I think people need to try and trust that expertise. They need to be very careful about where they look.